So, uh, hello everyone. When does Armageddon start? Good question. Uh, if you don't know Armageddon, Armageddon is the legendary battle or the historical battle that have to be, uh, that have to uh, occur at the end of time. In the Islamic, Christian, and Jewish history, we have stories about this battle. That at the end, we will face each other in the war and kill each other. Sorry for the uh, description, but this is what, what, what is said in the history. So. Uh, I wonder, I, I want to ask you, do you believe in that if religion at the beginning was to make uh, our souls safe, to believe in God, to believe that there is a reason for our existence, do you believe also in Armageddon? So I, I think Armageddon is something, uh, some extremist and uh, strange to uh, enter into this religious uh, core or soul. Uh, I'd like to present myself to you. I'm Firas al Dabbagh and I came from Baghdad, Iraq. And my initiative is about saying no to extremism. So my initiative con consists of just one word. Uh, uh, in fact, it's the shortest word, no, N-O. And this word is very, very powerful because if we say no as a group, collectively, all of the people around you say no to something that they, they believe it's wrong, nobody will be deceived to follow this path. The thing is, in Iraq, was every, everyone was afraid of saying this word, no. They believe in something inside themselves, but they just don't say it. And that caused the extremists to take power in my country. Um, here is Iraq. And many of you are familiar with the, with, the, with the map of my country because of news and because of the conflicts in the past years. And I was uh, born during the war with these guys, with Iran, our neighbors. And they are our allies now. <laughs> so. Uh, I was born during a conflict, and I entered to primary school when we had problems with these guys too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, while I was uh, growing up in primary and intermediate schools, uh, it was really difficult to live there in Iraq because of the international sanctions. We, live, we lived in literal poverty there. so. Life was difficult, and, and I'm sorry that my parents find it difficult to uh, provide me with the basic uh, needs of life. So after years of ye and, and years of uh, uh, difficult circumstances of living, uh, the Iraqi people were recruited to join militias by the former regime or Saddam's regime. In many occasions, like the uh, the day of the great marching in Arabic Yom al Zahf al Kabir. And the day of uh, loyalty or in Arabic Yom al Nakhwa. So we were trained to use arms and light weapons and just to be ready to fight. Whom to fight? We, we, we don't know. So we were raised that way. Uh, in 2003, the war started. And the international description of this war is the liberation of Iraq. And the Arabic description of this war is uh, uh, the fall of Baghdad. And we call it, uh, in Iraq, the, the war of the end, or game over war. So after 2003, we get rid of Saddam, and we were free at the first maybe the first time during the last 1,000 years, because Iraq is an ancient land and it's called Mesopotamia. This is Babylon, this is Assyria or Ashur, and here is uh, Sumeria, if you know it. So Iraq, the free civilization in the ancient times, 
didn't get its chance to become free to be a democratic, civilized country. After 2003, this time, this chance, historical chance, is being wasted, or was, was being wasted by extremists, unfortunately. And especially in 2006, 2007, the minds of the youth in Iraq were infected by extremist ideologies and terroristic ideologies. We have a small Armageddon inside of Iraq between Sunni and Shia. So we lost dearest ones. I lost friends and family members. I, it really makes me sad to, when, when I talk about it. So I, uh, I'm not about to talk about them. But it was really, really tragic in, in a way that you can't even imagine. And it makes you depressed, sad, and having no hope in this life. But if, you, if you're like this, this will make, uh, create a motivation for you uh, to do something, not to just sit or stand on the side and uh, look at what is happening in your country. So we decided, and by we, I mean me, myself, and the Iraqi youth to do something. I entered to university during these difficult circumstances, and while I was uh, having uh, breakfast in my university, I was talking to my friends, telling them that it was really difficult for me when one of my old friends threatened me. Threatened me. I, I, I used to play with him <coughs> when I was a child, and he threatened me. He forgot everything because his mind was totally corrupted by these ideologies. And another friend shared the same idea. My friend, too. He threatened me. My friend, too. He changed. And we were, we, after sharing this perspective about what is happening in Iraq, we thought of, what was it? Was it a disease, something in the water? What is it? Why these people changed? We tried to analyze the problem, and we tried to do something. We figured out that these people were afraid. The people that followed the extremists, the militias, the terrorists, they were afraid of saying no. They were recruited by these people, these guys, these bad guys. And we didn't. I'm not saying that we're strong. Maybe they have their own uh, situation or circumstances to not to say no. But what we want to do is to educate them to say no. I'm, I'll be talking briefly about the initiative. We have this vision that after the war, Iraqis had a historical, a historical chance to build a new democratic country, and this chance is being wasted by terrorists. And we think that this cannot continue. We can build a better Iraq. We analyze the problem, and we've seen that Many of Iraqi youth were deceived to join these terrorist cells. And the reason behind this may be the ignorance, the need of money. These terrorists pay good money, I assure you. And <laughs> yeah, and uh, the result of the ideological war, they link between the religion, the belief, and their, their extremist agenda, if I can call it like that. So the rebuilding of the country was interrupted. and our whole democracy is in danger. We analyzed also, also the causes of the problem, the link between these, their crimes, the terrorist crimes, and what they call religious duties. And many people uh, and youth minds are liable to be infected. They are raw material to be infected by these ideologies. And these threats for life events in Iraq suppressed the motivation of people to produce to especially the young age group to participate in the rebuilding uh, process of the country. So it's a problem on the national level of Iraq. And also it's now on the uh, level of the region. The project goal is raising, it's, it's simple, saying no publicly, loudly, and proudly, no to extremism. 
raising the level of consciousness of university students. Why did we target university students? Because we, we, have, cause, we, we have reasons for that. Because uh, we have few universities in Iraq, and we can talk to them. Uh, it's, it's the place of their gathering. We cannot go in, into the Iraqi streets and we talk to each one in the street. It's, it's, it's risky and dangerous. Uh, I want to, I really want, want you to imagine this situation though. You, you are like a stranger in your country. So we chose to focus on the university students. So we have this idea. We cannot let our children to be the bad guys in the future. We have, we, we've done the SWOT analysis, the strengths, weaknesses, the, uh, also the opportunities and threats of our project. And we've seen that the Iraqi community is already neutral in thinking before the war. And th this is good. And a high percentage of Iraqi high school graduate, uh, schools graduates go to study in universities so we can meet them. And Iraqis are in a critical period of hesitation after living under the mercy of terrorists for years. So they want to make a decision. What side will we stand for? We have weaknesses, the political problems, no trust in the government, the democratic environment is still new to Iraqi people, and terrorists are so active in Iraq, unfortunately. We will uh, make uh, some opportunities available to the Iraqi uh, youth. They will play a role in the rebuilding process of Iraq and they will have a better life. The, uh, the participation of youth in the rebuilding process through private or public sector, uh, this leadership environment will improve their lifestyle and they can contribute more and uh, the increasing chances for cooperation between the youth and the government Maybe new jobs also may be founded. The threats, uh, we have many, many threats, but the main uh, two threats, there may be an initial rejection to the project because they think that we're having a hidden agenda. We're not Iraqis, we're not, we're not part of you people. So, we, and we found that at the beginning. And the participants in the project may be targeted. And I, I uh, After uh, talking about the initiative, what we want to do exactly is to hold and what are we were doing during the next period, uh, previous period of time, we were doing small meetings inside the universities, inside uh, the schools in Iraq, so as to recruit more people, say, t telling them this uh, word, no, say no to extremism, don't be afraid of saying it, and our goal is to hold this big conference in, the, in Iraq. And we aim to invite the national media, the, the big media stations in the uh, Middle East, and also international media. I hope also CNN is, is invited to this conference. By, by holding this conference, uh, we aim to say it publicly for the first time that Iraqi people are against extremists, are against terrorism in the country. We are not afraid. We are many. We are not alone. We are not uh, the, uh, the victim. We, we will not be the victims anymore. So please, by coming to this uh, summit in here in the United States, I want to make this initiative on international levels. Uh, level. So I want you all to say, to say this sentence just for one time. No to extremism. Repeat after me, no to extremism, and thank you.